Hello and welcome back. In today's episode of the Terra series, we are going to learn some basic things about plants and animals on our planet. Where are they spread and why? Why are some species similar to each other and why are some of them so unique? Do plants and animals affect humans' activity and how? Are some of those species endangered? Before we start, I'd like to ask you to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for more useful content. Let's begin! When we mention biogeographical characteristics, we mainly mean the distribution of plants and animals, i.e. flora and fauna, although biogeographical research includes the distribution of all living beings on the planet. The space in which living beings are distributed is called the biosphere. The biosphere is composed of parts of the three spheres mentioned in previous videos, lithosphere, atmosphere and hydrosphere. If you didn't watch those videos, I suggest you to check them after this one. The upper limit of the biosphere is 10 to 12 kilometers from the Earth's surface, and the lower on the land at a depth of 2 to 3 kilometers. Factors that affect the biogeographical characteristics of an area can be divided into abiotic and biotic. Abiotic factors include climatic, edaphic, and orographic factors. On the other side, biotic factors include the mutual influence of organisms and the influence of humans. Biogeography is closely related to ecology, so all the above factors are also called ecological factors. Flora and fauna can be divided into several floristic and zoogeographical realms with many sub-realms. These divisions are extremely complex, and more detailed elaboration might be included in future videos if you are interested in that. For now, it is enough to note the general distribution of vegetation and the distribution of more well-known animal species on Earth. Vegetation can be classified into several types – tundra, coniferous forest, coastal vegetation, steppe, semi-desert vegetation, desert vegetation, mixed forests, savanna and pampas, equatorial forest, tropical forest and mountain vegetation. This is their distribution on the world map. Animal species can be better observed through zoogeographical realms – realm Neogea, realm Notogea and realm Arctogea. Note that I'm going to mention only some of the characteristic species that are interesting in my opinion. Also, I'm not going to mention sub-realms of each of their smaller realms. I can do that in some future videos if you like this one. If I didn't mention some species you like or you think are more important, feel free to write me in the comments. Realm Neogea is consisted by two smaller realms, Neotropical Realm and Madagascar Realm. The most well-known species of the Neotropical Realm are Anaconda, Jaguar, Crocodile, Violet Ear, Giant Armadillo, Spire Monkey and Era. For Madagascar realm we can mention Ringtail Lemur, Ai Ai and Boa. Realm Norogia is consisted by three smaller realms, Australian realm, New Zealand realm and Polynesian realm. Australian realm is the most characteristic for Kangaroo, Koala and Dingo. For New Zealand realm, the most well-known species are Kiwi Bird, Kea and Takahe. In Polynesian realm, Kagoo and Samoa flying fox are the most characteristic ones. Realm Arctogea has probably the most of well-known animal species of the world. This realm is also divided on three smaller realms – Ethiopian realm, Indomalaya realm and Holarctic realm. In the Ethiopian realm there are lion, elephant, hippopotamus, gorilla and antelope and a lot of other animals we saw in popular cartoons when we were kids. In the Malaya region is famous for tiger, peacock and Asian buffalo. Holarctic region is the biggest one and the most well-known species of this region are brown bear, polar bear, bald eagle, American bison, wild turkey, squirrel, otter, giant panda, camel, hawk, corsac fox, little bustard, yak, etc. Holarctic realm is very complex and has a lot of sub-realms, so if you want more detailed elaboration on this topic, please write me in the comment section. Now, why are some species distributed like I mentioned? There are several reasons. One of them lays in the evolution of the continents and Earth's landmass. Like you probably know, a long time ago there was a giant continent called Pangaea and the land mass was not divided like we know today. Because of that, we can see some similarities between flora and fauna of South America and Africa or Africa and South Asia or North America and Europe, etc. In North America, Europe and Asia, there's a whole willow family spread. In tropical areas of America, Africa and Asia, there's the same plant family called Zamiaceae. When it comes to animals, there are elephants in Africa and Indian Peninsula. 
Then there are jaguars in South America, which are related to leopards in Africa. Then in North America and Europe, there are species of bison. In Africa and Asia, there are species of buffalo. All those similarities between plants and animals say a lot about connections of these continents in the past. If you know some more similar plant or animal species worth mentioning, write down in the comment section. Now there's another question. Why are some species so unique for some places? There are kangaroos, koalas, kiwi birds or types of birds in Latin America which are characteristic only for those areas. The answer is pretty simple and it hides again in the evolution of the continents. It is about physical distance or isolation from other species. Because of isolation, some animal species were not able to get in contact with other animals, so they simply stopped with their evolution and headed in different direction with it. Plus, different geographical conditions had some effects on that. Another reason for distribution of plants and animals are local geographical factors like geological substrate, relief, climate, etc. I already mentioned how these factors affect plants in my previous videos, so be sure to check them after this one. Last but not least, an important factor is humans' influence through deforestation, agricultural activities, building settlements, hunting, etc. For example, mountain lions' habitat in North America decreased due to development of the settlements. This animal needs around 1000 square kilometers in order to live and reproduce normally. But due to development of North American settlements like Los Angeles in California or Vancouver in British Columbia, the natural habitat of mountain lions significantly decreased, which had a negative effect on the number of this animal species. Another great example on how people affect natural balance is in Australia. In 1862, British brought rabbits there, but the rapid proliferation of them began to threaten Australia's grasslands. Because of this, the Australian government banned the breeding of rabbits and authorized their hunting. As a result, dingo dogs appeared to begun to attack sheep herds because humans had largely exterminated rabbits, which are dingo's natural food. Sheep became the only easy source of food for dingo dogs, and thus began the battle between human and dingo in Australia. Existence of some plants and animal species definitely affect humans' life and activities, and all of them have positive and negative effects. As we know, plants play an important role in producing oxygen, food, medicine, etc. Some of the trees are used as a great material for architecture, so existence of some plants has an impact on human settlements. For example, bamboo trees are used as a building material in Asia. On the other hand, they can cause some problems in communication between some parts of the same continent. For example, rainforests were always a barrier between northern and southern part of Africa. When people were exploring Africa, rainforests made it so slow because it was very hard to move through them. Big areas covered with forests don't allow people to cultivate food, so they are forced to cut trees in order to get appropriate amount of land for agricultural activities. As for animals, we saw in Australia that rabbits eat a lot of grass on grasslands, and dingoes attack sheep which pretty complicate people's agricultural organization and production. Taken as example Africa, there are tons of insects which spread diseases which means that a lot of money and energy goes on healthcare services. In some African countries, there are a lot of venomous snakes. In those areas, people must constantly be on the lookout so as not to come into contact with them while doing some everyday activities. Some animals are very helpful, like Asian water buffalo, for example. Unfortunately, due to humans' activities, a lot of plants and animal species were extinct, and a lot of them are still on IUNCS red list of threatened species. According to Hans Rosling's book Factfulness from 2018, there are some positive trends in this area. By the year 1900, only 0.03% Earth's land surface was protected. In 1930, that number increased to 0.2%, which in 2018 came to 15% which says that people are doing something about this problem and I hope it will continue like that. When it comes to animal species, tiger, panda and black rhinoceros are examples of species that were not endangered more than in 1996. Tiger and black rhinoceros are still marked as same as they were in 1996 and giant panda changed its status from endangered to vulnerable. Not only that, scientists claim that number of these species is slightly increasing. Thank you for staying till the end, I appreciate it and I hope you learned something new. I've noticed that 90% of my audience is unsubscribed. If you're one of them, I'd appreciate if you subscribe now in order to support this channel and motivate me to do more videos. If you have any suggestions or critics, please write them in the comment section. Also, I invite you to follow me on social media and feel free to give me some suggestions on which social media to pay more attention from now on.
I started to post shorts more often, so be sure to check them as well. If you are interested in more geographical articles and scientific papers, I warmly suggest you to check the links of these useful websites in the description of the video. There you can find other videos from this series, so check it out. See you in the next video. Take care.